Hallelujah. <laughs> God is good all the time. God is good even when we're boneheads. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> we are stepping into a fresh move of God. I didn't say flesh move. I said fresh move. <laughs> so in this fresh move of God, the word says repent. Amen. Repent. Ah. Repent for our stupidity. Repent for the things that we approve of that doesn't, God doesn't approve of. Repent. Turn away from them. Repent. Why? So that you can be refreshed in the presence of the Lord. So without true repentance, when God is moving and there's another move, you can't get in that place. Amen? Amen. And that's what God is what, trying to get us to do. He's trying to get us in that place to the fresh move. Well, there's something required. Well, there's a lot of things required, but anyways. I'm going to deal with a couple of these things. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Yes. Everyone say yes. Yes. <laughs> Yes, Lord. Praise God. Oh, glory. Is everybody there? 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 12. Let's speak it. All things are lawful for me. But all things are not what? Helpful. Helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be put or brought under the what? Power of anything. So what he's trying to say is, God doesn't want you to be controlled by anything but him. Does everybody got it? He doesn't want money to control you. He doesn't want family to control you. He doesn't want circumstances to control you. He doesn't want anything of this world to control you but him. That means that you and I must do something. We must relinquish ownership. That must be a message from the Lord. We must do what? Relinquish ownership. In other words, you got to ask yourself, who is the true ownership? What's, who's the true ownership of you? Who's the true ownership of us? Who truly owns us? Well, that's what's supposed to happen. He's supposed to be the true ownership of me and you. Amen? But he doesn't. But see, so many people don't allow that. They won't relinquish ownership. And when you don't relinquish ownership to him, then you become controlled by something else. In verse 13, he said, Foods for the stomach and the stomach for the foods, but God will destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for sexual immorality, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. And God both raised up the Lord and will also raise us up by his own power, by his power. But you not, but... You not know, you not know, do you not know, excuse me, do you not know that your bodies are what? Members of Christ. Do you not know? Hmm. Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a harlot? Certainly not. Or do you not know that he who is joined to a harlot is one body with her? For the two, he says, shall become what? One flesh. But he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Flee sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does is outside the body, but he who commits sexual immortality, <laughs> immorality sins against his own body. 
Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? For you are what? Come on, is anybody reading this with me? For you are what? You are bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. You were bought from the devil. You were bought. You and I were bought. We were bought, paid for in full. The price by God the Father, and the price was the life of his son Jesus. That's why he manifested him. See, so there's true ownership in Christ, and that's it. He is our true ownership. Anything else that's not of Christ that tries to own you is the enemy. Does everybody get it? Everything else that tries to own you, and that's that battle that's in the spirit realm. The enemy is always trying to get you to a place to own you. People fall into a place where fear begins to own them. Where lust begins to own them. Where addiction begins to own them. Well, behind all of these things is demonic forces called devils, demons. Amen. Amen. Anger begins to own them. All of these things. You and I want to be free from all ownership except for the ownership of Christ Jesus. But the one thing that people have a problem with is relinquishing their own ownership. That's the major problem is relinquishing your own ownership and not recognizing the true owner of you who bought you and paid the price for me and you. He, he bought us from going to hell. Think about that. He paid the price for me and you not to go to hell. He paid the price. No one else can pay that price. You and I can't pay that price. But we can cooperate with the price that was paid. Amen? So that we can learn. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Second Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 12. Oh, hallelujah. Second Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 12. Is everybody there? Okay. Let's speak it together. For we do not commend ourselves. Say that again. We do not commend ourselves. We do not what? Commend ourselves. Why? Because we have relinquished ownership. We do not commend ourselves again to, uh, again to you, but give you opportunity to boast on our behalf that you may have an answer for those who boast in appearance but not in heart. For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God, and if we are of sound mind, it is for you. Hmm. For the love of Christ compels us because we judge thus that if one died for all, then all died. And he died for all, that those who live should, should what? Live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. Therefore, from now on, we recognize no one according to the flesh. Why? Because everyone according to the flesh has not relinquished their ownership. <laughs> That's wild. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a what? New creation. Listen, to become a new creation, you're under a new owner. And to maintain new creation, you must maintain a, a new ownership and constantly relinquish your own. That's where he says, all things have passed away, old owner. All old owners have passed away because you're under new ownership. Behold, all things have become what? New. New. Now, all things are of God 
who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of what? Reconciliation. Wow. Those who live should no longer live for themselves as new creations with a new ownership. Amen? One of the things that begins to happen, we begin to drift from that. We begin to drift from the arena of that. We are owned. That's why when you, somebody purchases something, there is a receipt. That receipt is called a seal. That's why God places his seal on you when he bought you. He bought you. There's a seal of purchase. It's a seal of purchase. Everyone seal, say seal of purchase. I have a seal of purchase. And the enemy knows the seal. He knows that you've been purchased through the blood of Christ. He sees it. He knows it. But even though you've been purchased through the blood of Christ, he knows whether you're a wimp or a warrior. He knows whether he can use you abuse you, mislead you, or he fears you, one or the other. He'll either use you for food or use you as a welcome mat to hell if you let him. In Philippians chapter 3, true ownership. Philippians chapter 3, in verse 7. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? Let's speak it, please. But what things were gained to me, these I have counted lost for Christ. <laughs> Yet... Indeed, I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord. My Lord. When it's representation, see, people call Jesus their Lord. That means he lords over your life. That means he is the owner of your life. But people misuse that word. Oh, Jesus is my Lord and Savior, but yet they live for themselves, not for the Lord. That's used in a name in vain. But people don't understand it, and they wonder why they have struggles. Is everybody okay? Oh, praise God. Where are we at now in verse, uh, verse what? Eight. Eight, okay. Yet indeed I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have what? Suffered, Suffered the loss of all things. Not some things, all things. Why? Because he has relinquished ownership of himself. That's why the word says we must allow the Lord to build the house or we labor in vain. Amen. And count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his death, if by any means I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I've already attained or I am already perfected, but I do what? Press I press on. I'm leaving all of my owners under a new ownership. Then I may lay hold of that which for uh, Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I don't count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. 
I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let us as many as mature or understand it have this, man, have this mind, have this way of thought, have this understanding. And if in anything you think otherwise, God will re reveal even this to you. Nevertheless, to the degree that we have already retained, let us walk by the same rule and let us be of the same mind. What he's saying is get the understanding of ownership. Ownership. Who is the owner of you? Who owns you? Are you still fighting for ownership? Do we still fight for that ownership? Or do we let other things own us? Sway us? Recognizing true ownership is essential. Willing to relinquish ownership to become a steward of the owner. That's called stewardship. A lot of people want to serve the Lord, but they haven't relinquished ownership. They want to be a steward to the king of glory, but they still haven't relinquished ownership. They call him Lord, but haven't relinquished ownership. They're still living for themselves. Those driven, <clears throat> those who are, are driven by their needs to be somebody. I'm going to say it again. Those who are driven by their needs to be somebody are the most dangerous to the advancement of the kingdom of God. Reje Why? Because they reject ownership. Who is already somebody? Amen? Not willing to commit to long-term contribution, which is necessary for building the church of God. Absalom was an example of this, King David's son. He was willing to give homage to his father, but disloyal in secret. It was a sin of self-importance. Mm. Mm. Ephesians 1. See, if the character of Christ really isn't flowing, then there's still a battle over ownership. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3. Don't get me wrong, people make mistakes, amen? But you want to get back in a position right away. Why? Because the enemy's going to come and try to do something, cause you to go back to ownership but you want to get right back into <laughs> relinquishing of ownership. And verse 3, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ, just as he did what? He chose us in him before the foundation of the world. So you were chosen before he even created the world. Did everybody get that? He already knew because he'd already been here and gone. He already was, who also is. We have a hard time comprehending that because we're bound by space and time, physically. Our little peanut brain can't handle all that stuff. But God isn't. He is past, present, and future all at one time. Does everybody get that? He's past, present, and future all at once. So that's why if you're blessed to be spiritual blessing and you're seated in heavenly places and if you're sitting with him, then you're past, present, and future all at once too. But see, your brain will fight that. Your carnal understanding will fight that. Why? Because you're still fighting for relinquishing of ownership. Oh, Hallelujah. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be what? Holy and without blame before him in love. Having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ in himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. To the praise of the glory of his grace by which he made us accepted in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace which he made to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence, 
having made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself. Then in the dispensation of the fullness of the times, he might gather together in all one, all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on the earth. Where? In him. In him also we have obtained a what? An inheritance being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. That we who first trusted Christ should be to the praise of his glory. We are chosen, we are predestined, we are adopted and have an inheritance in a place where you and I constantly relinquish ownership. ownership. Romans 8. Relinquishing ownership. Who is true ownership? Do your talents and abilities own you? Do your possessions own you? Does your job own you? Verse 12, let's speak it. Therefore, brethren, we are what? Debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, which means you have not relinquished ownership, you will what? Die. die. Hello. <laughs> You're going to die. You will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will what? Live because you have relinquished ownership. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father, which means Daddy. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then what? Heirs. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Verse 18. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed where? In us. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to fertility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. Not only that, but we who also have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves do what? Groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our, of our body. Why? See, when that groan is associated with because of the relinquishment of ownership, waiting for the other part of the ownership of your body. So if you've actually relinquished ownership of your soul and your spirit, but your body is always fighting, that's what's called the flesh. It wants ownership. And the devil uses your flesh to maintain ownership or fight against you to get ownership. Has everybody got it? Oh, hallelujah. But if, for we were saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with what? Perseverance, endurance, fight. No longer that place where we're fighting for us, we're fighting for him. No longer are we fighting for our presence, but his presence. Constant battle of relinquishing ownership. Galatians chapter 2. True ownership. Jesus constantly did it. He always said, it's not, I didn't come to do my will. I came to do the will of the Father. Oh, glory. 
Galatians 2, is everybody there? In verse 17. Let's speak it. But if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners. If Christ, therefore, a minister of sin, certainly not. For if I build again those things which I destroyed, I make myself a what? Transgressor. Why? Because if you've started off with relinquishing ownership, and then what you do is you start building on the things that you've relinquished, that means you've taken them back again. Now you are being taken, you are being taken ownership by something else, the things that you were freed from. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Let's go a little further. Verse, uh, verse 19. For I, for I through the law died to the law that I might live to God. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not set aside the grace of God, for if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died in vain. Wow. No longer I who live. Why? Because I am have a new owner. I've relinquished ownership and I have a new owner. And we are sealed by the new owner. In Mark 8. Mark 8. That seal stays on you until you willfully turn away from the Lord Or you die serving the devil. Then it's removed. Romans 8.34. Oh, glory. Eight. I said Mark 8.34. <laughs> Hallelujah. I started Roman for a minute there. Hold on. <laughs> Mark 8.34. Somebody there? Let's speak it. When he had called the people to himself. I said the people. Everybody he called. With his disciples also. He said to them, whoever desires to come after me, let him do what? Deny himself. Relinquish ownership. Has everybody got it? Take up the cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. Why? Because they're not willing to relinquish ownership. That means you're living according to the flesh and you will die. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. For what will a profit a man if he gains the world and loses his own soul? Wow. Or what will man give in exchange for his soul? Whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. That's intense. That's why he says, deny self, relinquish ownership of your life, relinquish ownership of self importance, relinquish ownership of self identity. In exchange for a new ownership, a new identity relating to the eternal living in a temporary realm. Amen? 2 Corinthians 4. Starting at verse Relinquishing ownership of your life, self-importance, self-identity, exchanging for a new ownership and a new identity related to eternal living in a temporary realm. In verse 1, Therefore, since we have this ministry as we have received mercy, we do not lose heart, but we have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness, not handling the word of God deceitfully. 
but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But even if our gospel is veiled, is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not relinquish their ownership, who do not believe lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is in the image of God, should shine on them. For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves, your bondservants, for Jesus' sake. For it is God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, and who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in what? Earthen vessels. That the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. Why? Because we've relinquished ownership. We are hard-pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always caring about the body of the, the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. Praise God. So we don't preach our self-ownership, but we are earthen vessels with a new owner and the power of Christ in me and you because we have relinquished ownership. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Listen, we want to flow in the move of God. People are still dependent on themselves. I don't know if you've ever noticed, but usually when you come to Christ, most of the time you lose everything. <laughs> I know a lot of wealthy people that came to the Lord, lost it all. <laughs> and they just don't get it. Man, I lost it all. What happened? Because it was everything you relied on. See, when you begin to cry out to the Lord, Lord, show me. I want to be your son. I want to be your daughter. I want to be your son servant i want to serve you believe me he starts removing those things or exposing those things that you're still trusting on that you're still leaning on that you're still owned by until you're no longer owned by anything but him and i'm going to tell you something when you're in a place where you're only owned by him it is freedom it is a place of joyful freedom. There is no fear. There's no concern. It's complete trust. Relinquished from this world. No longer entanglements of this world. Oh, glory. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 20. Let's speak it. But in a great house there are what? Not only vessels of gold and silver, but also vessels of wood and clay. Some for what? Honor and some for what? Dishonor. So you think the honor ones are the ones that relinquish ownership? Yeah. How about the ones that are dishonor? They will not relinquish ownership. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel of honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. Flee also youthful lust, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Everyone say pure heart. Look, you can't have a pure heart if you're not willing to relinquish ownership. Out of a what heart? Pure. And when your heart is pure, so will your hands be clean. But avoid what? Foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle and all, able to teach, patient and in humility, correcting those who are in opposition. If God perhaps will grant them repentance so that they may know the truth and that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. They've been taken captive because they will not relinquish ownership. Amen. Let me share with you, rebellion 
is resisting true ownership. Has everybody got it? Rebellion is resisting ownership from the Lord. That's what rebellion truly is. It's just resisting. It's the will, the, the, the will of not relinquishing ownership of yourself and rejecting the ownership of the Lord. That's called rebellion. Romans 10. Let's speak it. <clears throat> Romans 10. Brother, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they may be what? Saved. Saved. For I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness, seeking to establish their what? Own righteousness, have not submitted to the righteousness of God. Why? Because they haven't relinquished what? Ownership. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes or who follows. Seeking to establish own righteousness is the fruit of not willing to relinquish ownership. In James chapter 4. James chapter 4. Hallelujah. James 4 and verse 1. Is everybody okay? Amen. Are you getting this? You're all kind of quiet tonight. Maybe you're in deep concentration. What owns me? Does debt own me? Oh, that will own you. <laughs> James 4, verse 1. Let's speak it. Where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they come from, do they not come from your what? Desires for pleasure that war in your members. You lust and do not have. You murder and covenant cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you do not have because you don't ask correctly, man. You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your pleasures. Flesh. Adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is what? Enmity with God. Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Why? Because the world will not relinquish ownership of themselves. Or do you think that the scripture says in vain, the spirit who dwells in us yearns jealously, but he gives more grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud. He resists the what? So is the proud willing to relinquish ownership? Heck no. But he gives grace to the humble. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will what? Flee from you. Submit. <laughs> Submit to relinquish ownership of yourself and will unto a new, uh, a new order and a new owner. And John chapter 14. <clears throat> Just a simple, short teaching. <laughs> it's a good night to die. <laughs> yes. That third level of death, don't we? <laughs> Dear God, help us. Here, God help me. <laughs> Verse 1, let's speak it. John 14. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me, said Jesus. In my Father's house there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, 
there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. In other words, what is he saying? He's saying, listen, you relinquish ownership and give me ownership, I'm going to come for you. Because I only come for the things I own. There's going to be a lot of disappointed people when Jesus decides to take people off the earth in the rapture. There's going to be a lot of, why didn't you take me? Because you never relinquished ownership. And I want to close at 1 John chapter 3. Why do you think people backslide? You know, even Paul said, I got to turn this one over to Satan. Then he might be saved. First John chapter 3 and verse 1. Beloved, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should what? That we should be called children of God. Therefore, the world does not know us because it did not know him. Beloved, now we are children of God and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be, but we shall know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Why is that going to happen? Because we relinquish ownership. We are under a new owner. And everyone who has this hope in himself, in him, purifies himself just as he is pure. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him there is no sin. Whoever abides in him does not sin, and whoever sins has neither seen him nor known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness and ri is righteous, just as he is righteous. And he who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whoever has been born of God does not sin. In other words, why? Because he relinquishes ownership. For his seed remains in him and he cannot sin because he has been born of God. In this the children of God and the children of the devil are manifested. And whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. Powerful. Like I said, simple, short teaching. But let it penetrate. Let reality come. Recognizing who owns you. What owns you. And severing it. Severing the things. That's why the word says that as a soldier of the most high God, we cannot be entangled with the affairs of this world. Why? Because that relinquishes ownership of Christ into ownership of the world. Amen? What owns you? What sways you? What leads you? That's where people fall into bondage. So we need to relinquish ownership of ourself and let the new owner take possession of us. Amen? Praise God. Father, we are honored and blessed. And we want to say thank you. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to relinquish ownership and give you full, full ownership to possess us, to fill us, to use us, and to express yourself through us. Again, asking for forgiveness of all the times we've taken back ownership, Lord. Have mercy, have mercy, have mercy, and let your grace abound. So tonight, Lord, we just relinquish our own ownership in the name of Jesus and commit to you our spirit, soul, body, flesh, will, desires, and possessions as a living sacrifice to serve you, honor you, and express you as the true owner purchased through the blood of Christ of our soul, our spirit, and our body. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. 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 Stay blessed and stay dressed with the glory.